to uh, the Digital Learning Briefing on Assessment and its power in distance learning. This is part of a video in a series of three videos showing you some of the tools that you can use for assessment for distance learning. So formative assessment, it's so important. It's such a massive part of our pedagogy um, in our normal classroom. Really, I wanted to show how um, actually using our normal pedagogy and how we can make it even more powerful through distance learning. So we've looked at um, assessment in different formats um, over the past few teaching and learning briefings. Um, and there should be a link right now on the screen um, up, up the top um, to some of the other CPD links that we've had if you've missed any of the teaching and learning briefings. Okay, but why should we be assessing students? Is it really fair to assess the students when they're sitting at home, when they're not having a normal experience? Well, one of the reasons to assess the students is they've had, by the end of uh, the summer, by the end of July, um, when they would break up 350 online lessons, 350 lessons that have been taught through distance learning. So 14 weeks worth of lessons, it's really important that we do assess something to find out what they do know, what they don't know, what their gaps are, to find out what we need to do to support them so that we know where to go, where to move forward. So ass assessment for learning is more important than ever before because we need to know what they don't know and we need to be moving those students forward. Okay, Re um, assessment that we're going to look at today, some of the assessment tools can be really, really powerful for differentiation, but personalised learning. Uh, there's different tools for assessment. Okay, so uh, Kahoot, we've looked at this before. Again, there should be a link um, up at the top to the Kahoot training. Um, we've looked at it before and about how to set it up and how to use it. So if you're not um, familiar with Kahoot, please follow that um, link and have a little look at about what Kahoot is. Seneca Learning, again, there should be a link pop up right now. Okay, Seneca Learning, uh, Kev did amazing CPD on Seneca Learning and how amazing that is. Okay, um, we've got another one which is quizzes over there um, and um, Kira did a fabulous CPD on quizzes about what that is. We've got Google Forms which I'm going to, there is another video um, which will be linked at the end of this video about how Google Forms, if you've not really used them before, or how to make them really powerful because they are probably one of the most powerful tools you can use. And Nearpod as well, Nearpod is brilliant and there's some really great resources that you could use on Nearpod. So we're just going to talk a bit briefly about Kahoot Seneca and quizzes because we've met them before the videos are linked in this video um, but I just want to show you some of the how they can be used for assessment so Kahoot is a brilliant tool that is a free tool but we have got the extra upgrade at the moment so when you look at the report section on Kahoot it shows you which questions are the most difficult for the students uh, which students need follow-up and which haven't completed the game those ones you've just clicked, clicked. okay um, if students and this isn't a great tool if there is um three difficult questions more than three difficult questions then who will automatically generate a new quiz based on those difficult questions so you can follow up with students to make sure that they're getting that retrieval practice make sure that they're getting access to those so we've already it's already identifying those weak areas so you can import those into another kahoot later on get that retrieval practice going okay you, um, you also get individual reports for a student okay saying what they did and didn't get wrong Okay, what about Seneca? Like um, I said, Seneca, we've done a CPD session on that. Okay, um, produces a report like this. So you've got all the topics um, and it shows you individually um, how the students have got on. You can download this into the spreadsheet, but I don't like it, it's not so pretty. But um, it shows you how well the students have gone. Seneca's great because it's linked to the specification in pretty much every um, subject. I haven't found one that it's not yet, but also, uh, it's completely free okay it's brilliant quizzes is another one that gives a great report tool okay it really shows you that assessment for learning what students have and haven't understood in your questions so that you can then uh, put those questions maybe back in or you can reteach that element you can get whole class breakdowns you can get individual students breakdowns okay so why it's important to give feedback let's not isolate those students those students are sitting potentially um, all day at a computer with maybe nobody at home getting any feedback about how well they're doing let's let the students know you're that they you're there that they're not sitting in the dark with nobody at the other end of this computer okay support them give them something to acknowledgement okay that students need to know where they're going they need to know where they've been where they're going and what they need to learn still okay it's assessments important for us to move those students forward and putting the learner at the heart of the process reducing that gap that we know is probably going to exist through distance learning. 
Okay, so what feedback? Okay, poor feedback can harm learning and praise has no impact on learning. We know these two facts. However, this isn't a normal situation. Praise and acknowledgement will have a huge impact on the motivation of students turning up to your class, turning up to your online distance learning classroom. But be sincere, they know it's not great work when they didn't actually hand anything in, okay? Be clear about what you want them to do, how to move on. Try and set specific goals, but also just respond. Make sure the students know you're there. Respond to the work that they've done. It has a huge impact in their self-motivation to keep turning up. Okay, so here I'm just gonna to link to a couple of resources. Um, have a look at um, Doug's Teach Like a Champion blog. He's got some great videos. He does videos regularly about um, great teaching that's going on in classrooms. So these are some great ones that we could use for um, distance learning. How we can dissolve the screen, that doesn't mean get rid of it. It means how we can do asynchronous learning like I'm doing today with some video and stuff. Okay, um, retrieval practice, how we can still incorporate that into our lessons as well. So it's using the great classroom pedagogy we've got now and developing that even further. Um, uh, Freddie did, hopefully there'll be a link up here at the top. Freddie did an amazing CPD link as well, CPD session on Iris. No, don't be scared, it's not the, um, it's not what you think. Um, Iris actually has amazing CPD within it without cameras uh, that you can use to watch uh, things or you can just look at the research. They are very, very active and there's some great um, research in there. And it's all about being evidence informed practitioners. So more access, it's more like a portal um, to that evidence, okay? So more access to that. I hope that you found this helpful and I hope that you watch some of the other videos. Um, this, like I said, is part of one of three videos based on how we can use assessment in our distance online classrooms. Have a little look at these. Please check out some of the other CPD videos that I've made, including the ones on Google Forms and subscribe to find out more.